Hey everybody, Snake Doc back. We're going to do a budget pistol unboxing here. And here we can see on the box we have the Walther logo. So this is indeed a Walther. And here we can see we have a Creed. Picked this up yesterday from a local seller. This was not in a store. This was from a private party. So here you can see inside the box I have four magazines. One, two, three, and four. These are 16 round magazines. Um, they are marked for every round, starting with five and four right here, four, and then 16 is right here. Uh, these are nicely blue polished, made in Italy, Metgar magazine. And on the base plate, they say, there you can see we have the Walther logo and the Creed. Um, I have not fired this yet. I just got it yesterday. Planning on going Saturday. Hopefully, um, I can find somewhere to shoot this Saturday. So, let's show that we are clear. We're going to rack it open, and there we can see some shine on the feed ramp. So, we know we have an empty chamber. We're going to eject the magazine and show that that's clear, and we have an empty mag well now. So... Let's go over a few things on this and then we'll compare it. I have uh, my PPQ-22 here, which is the exact size of the PPQ 9mm. And uh, we'll just kind of talk about some differences and um, why you should potentially pick one of these up for like a, um, a stash gun, a truck gun, a car gun, glove box gun, nightstand gun, toolbox gun. Um, a basement gun, uh, you know, they're, <clears throat> they're just a, a kind of a cool design in my opinion. And, and they're for the most part, relatively, uh, extremely safe and they have a nice trigger on them. So, uh, let's start with here. We have front and rear slide serrations on it, a tenifer treated slide, which is going to give you, um, a nice finish as well as protection for the steel. Um, this one, I'm going to have to do some touch up. This prior owner did some, um, the, let's see here where you shine the light and charge the lights, charge the sights and they glow in the dark. They did some of that glow on paint and he didn't do a really great job with it. You can kind of see there's like a hole on that one, but these are glowing and I, I don't know how long they'll glow for. I just use the weapon light, uh, pick a tinny rail with two slots on it. So you can add a weapon light or a laser. This is a cheap NC star weapon light that actually is super bright. It's a super direct beam and it works really well. And it's really sharp up here. So if you needed to jam somebody in the face with it, it would really hurt. Look at that. So that's just, uh, that's one thing. Um, <clears throat> so this is a hammer fired gun and it's a pre-cocked hammer. It does not have a double strike capability because it's not a true full double action pistol. Um, it is in the sense that the trigger pull cams the hammer back. There you can see the hammer moving. So the hammer does cam and pulling the trigger the rest of the way completes the firing cycle. And trigger is outstanding on this. I mean, this, this trigger has to be well under five pounds. Uh, it is, by watching the hammer, you can stage it, and you can almost, you can stage it by feel too. But if you do pull too abruptly, you can, you can make it fire. Sometimes when the hammers fall, it drowns out my voice. So um, I'm, I said, if sometimes if you pull too abruptly, you can make the hammer fall and fire. Um, the first trigger pull I did on this, I couldn't believe how light it was, and I actually fired it before I staged it. Uh, takedown is extremely simple on this. It's going to be just like on an M&P. You're going to lock your slide back, except you don't have to pull the trigger. You're going to rotate your safety or your uh, takedown lever like that and let your slide come forward and off it comes. Um, <clears throat> here we can see the internals. And this is made up of three components from what I've seen on a detailed disassembly. Uh, you have like a sear group, uh, which includes that ejector. Then there's the hammer group, 
and then you have your trigger group up here. Now this has the the frame rails are part of a chassis, so it's it's like um, it's almost it's almost like the uh, P two fifty Sig in a way. If if they would have made that whole chassis removable, um, but you can see that the structure of your guide rails for your slide go down, and then it's a it's a big chunky part of steel down in there so it's really robust um, your you can see the coil spring right here that is for uh, your slide stop slide stop is a bit extended and you, you can drop the slide with it without using two hands like some other guns uh, reversible magazine release and it is uh, it's not super stiff it's just Pretty much the right tension and it's huge and it's easily accessible without changing your grip onto the grip extremely ergonomic it is how it is though there's nothing interchangeable about this so no other back strap options it's just one size fits everybody um, I've seen lots of women shooters on these uh, videos for creeds and they seem to do just fine with it I have pretty big hands and it doesn't feel way too small uh, it's pretty much equivalent in size to this PPQ medium grip, in my opinion. Um, I want to put the mag in there and show you how the sides of the frame are cut out. So the mag does not sit down below the grip. But if it was stuck and you had a malfunction, you have these two flared um, sides to the base. You can kind of see how they, they're a little bit um, triangular shaped. And you can really grab those and they're serrated and you could rip the mag out if you needed to. Um, the mag ejects extremely forcefully. So if you have a good working clean gun, um, you shouldn't have any problems with the mags dropping free. Uh, we covered the two slot pick rail. Uh, we pretty much covered everything. Let's, the trigger does not have a blade safety, but it is drop safe. Uh, it has a uh, firing pin block right here that needs to be actuated by the pulling of the trigger. You can see um, this that rises up right here is what deactivates that. Uh, the trigger is steel, and it is there's extremely subtle, which you can't even feel them. If let's see if you can hear it. So there's super subtle grooves on there, but you can't really feel it. It's I think it's just for traction. It's not for it's not like the Glock 1923 triggers where they're, the serrations are really um, abrasive and high round count shooting. Um, this has a it's a nice bevel at the edge on each side, and it's extremely comfortable. Really easy to pull too. So uh, let's go on to the slide here real quick. We have really narrow. Uh, back portion to the pickup bar um, and actually this there's another like sub chassis that's in this slide that contains the firing pin and the extractor and everything this has a plastic guide rod with a flat wound spring and the interesting part about the Creed one of the cost savings somebody else showed and I want to show this I don't know if I'll get this on camera but they said the machining was top-notch and on this one Maybe you can see this one. There's some swirls in the machining there. Um, not a big deal at all. Uh, the build date on this, the German date code, puts this as a 2019 build gun. Um, <clears throat> so onto the barrel. The barrels are a three-piece barrel. You have the round cylinder part, which is pressed in to the locking block area. Uh, and chamber it actually I mean the barrel is continuous as the chamber but this area which would be called the chamber area of the barrel is um, a separate piece and then you can see this polished part this high finished part the feed ramp with two stages to it is another part that's pressed in so a three-piece barrel um, some other barrels have been that way in in previous manufacturing browning high powers one of them um, there you can see the uh, firing pin block is spring-loaded 
and then here's what the back end of the slide the slide plate looks like uh, <clears throat> sight is removable with a flathead screwdriver front sight rear sight is drift adjustable and steel um, we'll see if this one shoots point of impact I imagine it probably will um, I'm gonna put this back together real quick so you just all you have to do is go over you can just take it take the slide back to an area that'll clear that lever flip the lever forward and then you're back together and you can function check it so uh, let's show what it comes with this is what this one came with it comes with a Walther lock and it comes with an owner's manual now the interesting thing is it has the lifetime warranty and they brag about it numerous times in here that it goes for doesn't even matter if you're not the original purchaser which I'm not blah 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 but it says um, I wanted to say uh, it's not on this page sorry let me see if I can find it there was I saw where it was like you know as long as the firearm is still supported well the creed has been discontinued just like the ppx so i'm curious to find out hopefully i'll never need to know but i'm curious what their actual parts on hand is like are they still going to support this with uh you know are they going how long are they going to stock parts for this when things break or if things break on here how long are they going to be able to do that and if you sent it in you know and they don't have it there isn't, you know, what are they going to offer you? They're probably not going to offer you a PPQ because they cost way more than this. And I sure as hell wouldn't want a CCP because that gun, in my opinion, is not a good, good firearm. Um, let's, let's move this out of the way. And let's bring the PPQ out here. We'll show you a size comparison. We'll throw this on the scale and get the calipers out and then we'll wrap up. So here we can see uh, we have the PPQ-22, this I have, it's threaded barrel because I shoot it silenced, but um, this is identical in size to the 9mm PPQ, yeah, I have a video on that if you don't believe me, but um, there you can see the Creed is about an eighth of an inch longer uh, in the slide. If you line up the bottom here, you can see that the slide is indeed taller because it is a hammer-fired gun. Um, this 22 is actually a hammer-fired gun, too, but it's it's a different style. So um, it's again dimensionally the same as this. Man, I just got sawdust all over this. The uh, striker-fired version. Mag release is the same. Grip angle is going to be the same. Um, actually, it's ergonomically there. You can't really even tell a difference. Um, the texture on this on this 22 PPQ is a little more aggressive on the stipple, the factory stipple. So it feels like it locks into your hand a little bit better than this one does. This one is a little bit more slippery. Magazine and style is going to be somewhat different too, um, where you can see, like I was talking about, the base plate is below the actual grip frame, whereas this one it's flush and it's um, graspable right here. Takedown is going to be different too. Obviously, you you know retract your slide, pull down on this, and your slide comes off. Um, and then also your trigger guard shape is going to be different. This has a square Glock style trigger guard, whereas this is a rounded. Uh, this has a three slot Picatinny rail. This has a two slot. And there you can see a difference in the bore height so it's probably a quarter inch taller bore height on the Creed sights are going to be different the 22 sights are somewhat different than the 9 millimeter version sights these are a solid black rear and then it's a single dot front which I painted neon green um, and then we know we have a three three dot sight configuration on the Creed and this one just happens to have been messed with by the prior owner so uh, I don't believe they ship with luminescent sights. I've never seen where they have. They should just be bright white dots, so he must have done that. Uh, let's throw them on the scale, or throw this on the scale and get the actual numbers for this. 
Let's see if I can turn it and maybe you can read it. This will be in ounces. Unloaded, 26.84 ounces. Um, this is a 22, so it's going to be somewhat lighter than the 9mm version. I don't remember the difference, but 22.72 uh, ounces on the PPQ. Um, let's get calipers out. And then we'll compare the slide width difference. And this will be in uh, standard measurement. So we have uh, 1. 1.17 for the width of the slide. Let's check right down here at the grip frame at the back. We have 1.18. And then we'll check it right here in the middle of the grip. 1.19, 1.18. So it's very consistent, even at that uh, at your slide stop, we have a 1.22. Um, this PPQ is ambidextrous slide release. Let's check the width on that. We have 1.34 slide width, 1.07. So there's about a tenth of an inch difference there. We'll check that grip frame right here, 1.20 on the PPQ, and then the mid portion of the grip, uh, 1.30. So similar, um, you're going to have that higher bore axis because of the hammer fired versus striker fired. Uh, again, a little bit more slickness on the grip. Traction grip, talon grip, they both make wraparound uh, grips for this, or you could just throw like a, a Hogue sleeve or a Packmeyer sleeve on there if you wanted to. Or bicycle inner tubes, one of the cheap ways that people do it too, and I've done it too. Um, so overall, I can't wait to shoot it. I think it's going to be a great little stash gun, especially for what I have into it. I mean, the four mags and everything, awesome. CDNN is still selling these for $250 right now. It's a great gun for $250. It ships with two magazines, and they have magazines for about $20 bucks a piece. Matt Gar Italian, quality made mags, nice blued finish on it high polish um, for under 300 bucks you could get uh, I think they were running five dollar shipping so you'd be at 255 for the gun with two mags if you added two more mags you'd be at 295 shipped <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> that'd be a smoking deal to have four mags in this gun for under 300 ready to rock plus your FFL fee <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> so I appreciate you guys watching Always shoot safe.